Hello. My name is Helen Lowe. Oh, I know it might not mean much to you, but Eleanor Bumpers was my friend. Was it raining or clear that day? I don't know. On October 29, 1984, to Eleanor Bumpers, weather was of no consequence as she surrendered her life force reluctantly to a beast in tainted armor. Poor Grandma Bumpers. Arthritic pain weaved itself throughout her 66-year-old bones and body till she couldn't feel the things she touched anymore. She used to sit sometimes with me and chat on the front porch and, like my bumpers, I suffered the same ailment. So most of the time we spoke in pain about our pains and puffed on the Chesterfields. And the cigarettes become a problem because my bumpers would drop hers to the ground and wouldn't know she'd done it till I told her. I said, my bumpers, if you won't smoke that cigarette, hun, you got to pick it up off the ground. My bumpers had a lot of hair, you know, and, and she let the neighborhood kids comb it for her because she couldn't do it anymore. And when Eleanor would come back from the grocery store, she would drag her left leg behind her as fast as her ailment would allow. Oh, wasn't her pulling the food cart, though. Oh, it's someone else, as she couldn't carry things in her hands anymore. And the cops come. They come to evict my bumpers from her home. Her apartment on University Avenue in the Bronx, you see, she owed the landlord $96.85 back rent. And they come with gas masks, flak jackets, protective shields, iron pumps, and yes, Lord, shotguns. And they blew my bumpers into oblivion. Cut her up. Took away God's gift because they said she was dangerous. Said she'd come at him with a knife in her arthritic possession. Slow-footed, 66-year-old, 300-pound, black, black grandma bumpers killed by Koch Ward bureaucracy. And I guess now the world's supposed to be a better place for the efforts of the valiant cops in the raiding committee who converged on such a menace to society it took away my friend and this is justice and this is justice farewell my bumpers farewell Appetites. You cannot stop smoking, although you know it is killing your lungs. You cannot stop eating, although you know it is killing your heart. You cannot stop producing and purchasing useless junk, although you know it is killing your planet. Something profoundly human in this, I guess. Still, it does seem like a shame. Allow me then a small proposal. Forget all of the international conferences to negotiate treaties that probably won't work and that no one will observe anyway. Let us call one final and definitive international conference to rename the Earth Easter Planet. After that Pacific Isle, once an abundant paradise, overindulged to the point of starvation. Visit there today. Take a voyage into your future. The massive monuments we have constructed will remain standing, too, for a time. And aliens who come down to visit a few centuries from now will, perhaps, after a quick assessment, 
place a small plaque before they depart. Something profoundly human in this, the words will read. Still, it does seem like a shame. By the rivers of Babylon, where we set sail, down, and there we wait, is the human Messiah. By the rivers of Babylon, where we set down. Required from us a song. Oh Lord, now how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? By the rivers of Babylon. On the day the Pope died. On the day the Pope died. No one knew that he'd been dead since before 9 11. No one told you. No one paid enough attention to push him over. Obviously not crusaders praying to Jesus while bombing mosques. They say he was a man of peace, admonished by St. Lauren Hill for the sins of pedophile priests. Gas prices rising like the flame of souls dying for oil, and the lies about those weapons of mass destruction yet to be found. Tsunamis Raged like the tears of the planet, wounded and ravaged by a raped ecology as water becomes the next commodity. It wasn't on the Disney Channel, so don't look on Fox 5 or Hot 97 where misled hip hoppers pimp Coca Cola and labor leaders disappear from Colombia where the peso is worth even less than a dollar. Did the evangelicals tell you in church on Sunday that Social Security has been hijacked by gangsters? The Christians that lied and stole two elections. So on the day the Pope died, the most impoverished people of the land who are mostly black, beige, and brown still genuflect to a white man. Heads bowed, kneeling on the ground, giving their hard-earned cash to the richest men on earth while the kingdom of heaven is within. So on the day the Pope died, the truly faithful cried and gave praise to Mary, the black Madonna, otherwise known as Isis, marched in the streets bearing death symbols, turned their backs to the Vatican for not excommunicating Hitler, opened their closets and burned sage to exorcise demons, set fire to fascists disguised as Republicans, fanned the cold while channeling Phoenix. On the day the Pope died, El Salvadoran martyrs were still not vindicated. Archbishop Romero turned in his grave as the death of Sister Dorothy Stang of Brazil is being investigated. And the conspiracy of murder continues against peasants protecting the rainforest. Angels of justice guard brave priests like Reverends the Cleric and Sandoval as they preach the theology of liberation in a land that is evil and hostile. So on the day the Pope died, it seemed as if no one had been listening as millions of oppressed nationalities left the earth from man-made diseases while coat hangers returned to those seeking abortions. Still, Mumia Abu Jamal sits on death row and our children suffer death from McDonald's trying to pay back student loans with salaries from Starbucks. Dreaming of making a living on death jam, combing the country doing open mics and poetry slams, till realizing the dreams turned into a nightmare as death jam poets line up for welfare. So on the day the Pope died, we pray for a new regime that truly reflects the culture of life, where the strong will truly protect the weak, as bells ring in the Vatican sending vibrations throughout the planet for the true liberation of the human spirit.
for the wicked. Carry us away, tranquility. Require from us a song. Oh, oh Lord, now how, how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? By the rivers of Babylon, where we sit down. And there we wait, as we remember Zion. By the rivers of Babylon. Where we sit down, down, down. and there we wait, as we remember, remember Zion. This poem is called Impotence. It's a word I coined to describe my state of mind before the 2019 British general election. It's a paradoxical term, suggesting a combination of dread, not wanting to believe the omens of defeat, impotence, but also in the sense of not, no portents, a subtle, rejection of fatalism for no matter what events befall us even if long predicted inevitable we still have a choice about how we respond to them impotence the week before the election of the dictator people hotly debated whether Friday the 13th was a lucky or unlucky date the day before the election of the dictator, over 300 starlings were discovered dead in a country lane. The day of the election of the dictator, rain clobbered the streets, but hope still chattered in the air. The first day of the dictatorship, a storm on the other side of the world dumped tens of thousands of fat innkeeper worms on a beach, a pale pink tsunami of a species also known as penis fish for its striking resemblance to the semi-tumescent member of a unitesticular Caucasian adult male. An hour before their corpses were found, the starlings had been seen in murmuration the post-mortem revealed they died of trauma and internal bleeding, consistent with flying hard into the road. Standing on the platform, waiting for the train With a battered suitcase, she won't pass here again Cassandra scorned and shunned by all for everything she sees The horror and the glory are good health and disease Suspected and mistrusted for everything she knows. They say she sires disaster and we reap what she sows. Standing on the platform waiting for the train with a battered suitcase, she won't pass here again. Standing on the platform with a waxen face 
Already so far away from this time and place What crime is discerning the truth from calumny Gently draw the curtain to glance at destiny We might be less stone-hearted, misguided and so blind if Cassandra's oracle had not been left behind. Standing on the platform with a waxen face, already so far away from this time and place, standing on the platform The desecration of Jackie Roosevelt Robinson's statue here in Brooklyn. Don't save this piece of writing. It is just another history lesson, another begging for more time, another disappearance as we adhere to Jackie never asking to be immortalized. I think he would rather not use your mold than patina and retire his 42. No, keep him in the riddle tag of an urban ghetto. Place him with swastika and call him the N-word. His baton rage, he the sage for the person of color, the carrier of the martyrdom, even from beyond the dead, desecrate his spirit. Cheer him as fan by rubbing his monument for their museums, the ruins of Charleston, the civil war in Mardinity, his underground railroad tore down in New York City to build a glass structure or metal beam. This skyscraper is for real. Did not protect from the pejorative or the expletive. Bully him, for he cannot speak. He is peace be still. His willingness to come and consider his life a legend. Beg them for forgiveness. His living in vain. The shame of calling it post-racial, a nation of diversity. Multi-generational or technicolor of diversity. Further the knowledge or isolate the pain, it's carcinogenic. Pending the case, traces of a racist paces himself. Redistribute and redline him. Take away the voting right. It's choking him with sugar. Pull the trigger because he is a man on the street and his words against your words, his thuggish walk, his sluggish talk, and the lawsuit to pursue happiness the lapses of his family. So he is worn as old boots, his roots in the neighborhood of Brooklyn, the historic preservation, the reservation to hire him. He is a butler and a preacher and a pimp and other monuments, a desecration to the Dodgers, the forages of hate and in increments and in paces. But he will stand there as long as he can be seen. Death has no power. He has lure and longevity. His meter is in sonnets or iambics, but it is there and it's universal. The desecration of Jackie Roosevelt's statue here in Brooklyn. Thank you so much. The title is, I Say, We Need to Have a Talk with Che Guevara. And the poem says, Liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia, liberate Michigan. The title is, The Problem with Roaches. And the poem says, the problem with roaches is that you cannot hear them when they're coming. 
The title is Children Will Stop It. The poem says, Once governments, parents, and adults stop bullying each other. Muchas gracias. Uh, bienvenidos a todos. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to everyone. Um, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Serena, Michael, and the staff at Books Are Magic for giving this Brooklyn boy a chance to come home. I was born um, in the East New York section of Brooklyn in 1957, and here we are. Um, Francisco Luis Espada, Frank Espada was born in Utuado, Puerto Rico, and died in Pacifica, California. The year of his birth, 1930, the year of his death, 2014. His mother was born in Utuado. His grandfather was the mayor of Utuado. When Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in the fall of 2017, I saw Utuado over and over on TV, on the internet in the headlines. As John Lee Anderson put it in the pages of the New Yorker, Utuado had, quote, become a byword for the island's devastation. Devastation. At least 3,000 people died there, according to one study. Many put the death toll at over 4,000. In the middle of all this, I started talking to my father, even though he's dead. Actually, I started talking to his ashes in a box on my bookshelf. And that was the genesis of this last and final poem. Fittingly enough, it's called Letter to My Father, October 2017. You once said, my reward for this life will be a thousand pounds of dirt shoveled in my face. You were wrong. You are seven pounds of ashes in a box, a Puerto Rican flag wrapped around you next to a red brick from the house in Utuado where you were born, all cramped together on my bookshelf. You taught me there is no God, no life after this life, so I know you are not watching me type this letter over my shoulder. When I was a boy, you were God. I watched from the seventh floor of the projects as you walked down into the street to stop a public execution. A big man caught a small man stealing his car, and everyone in Brooklyn heard the car alarm wail of the condemned. He's killing me. That a word from you, the executioner's hand slipped from the hair of the thief. The kid was high, was all you said when you came back to us. When I was a boy and you were God, we flew to Puerto Rico. You said. My grandfather was the mayor of Utuado. His name was Buenaventura. That means good fortune. I believed in your grandfather's name. I heard the tree frogs chanting to each other all night. I saw a banana leaf and elephant palm sprouting from the mountain's belly. I gnawed the mango's pit and the sweet yellow hair stuck between my teeth. I said to you, you came from another planet. How'd you do it? You said, every morning, just before I woke up, I saw the mountains. Every morning, I see the mountains. And Utuado, three sisters, all in their 70s, all 
bedridden. All Pentecostales who only left the house for church lay sleeping on mattresses spread across the floor when the hurricane gutted the mountain the way a butcher slices open a dangled pig and a rolling wall of mud buried them leaving the fourth sister to stagger into the street screaming like an unheeded prophet about the end of the world in Utualo, a man who cultivated a garden of aguacate and carambola, feeding the avocado and star fruit to his nieces from New York, so the trees in his garden beheaded all at once like the soldiers of a beaten army, and so hanged himself. In Utualo, a welder and a handyman rigged a pulley with a shopping cart to ferry rice and beans across the river where the bridge collapsed. Witness the cart swaying above so many hands that raised a sign that told the helicopters, Campamento los olvidados. Camp of the forgotten. Los olvidados. Wait, seven hours in line for a government meal of skittles and vienna sausage or a tart to cover the bones of a house with no roof as the fungus grows on their skin from sleeping on mattresses drenched with the spit of the hurricane they drink the brown water waiting for microscopic monsters in their bellies to visit plagues upon them a nurse says these people are going to have an epidemic these people are going to die. The president flips rolls of paper towels to a crowd at a church in Guaynabo, Zeus lobbing thunderbolts on the locked ward of his delusions. Down the block, cousin Ricardo Bernice's boy says that somebody stole his can of diesel. I heard somebody ask you once what Puerto Rico needed to be free, and you said, Tres pulgadas de sangre en la calle three inches of blood in the street. Now, three inches of mud flow through the streets of Utualo and troops patrol the town as if guarding the vein of copper in the ground, as if a shovel digging graves in the backyard might strike the ore below, as if La Brigada swinging machetes the clear the road might remember the last uprising. I know you are not God. I have the proof. Seven pounds of ashes in a box on my bookshelf. Gods do not die. And yet, I want you to be God again. Stride from the crowd to seize the president's arm before another roll of paper towels sails away thunder Spanish obscenities in his face, banish him to a roofless rainstorm in Utualo so he unravels one soaked sheet after another till there is nothing left but his cardboard heart. I promised myself I would stop talking to you, white box of gray grit. You were deaf even before you died. Hear my promise now. I will take you to the mountains where houses lost like ships at sea rise blue and yellow from the mud. I will open my hands. I will scatter your ashes. Inutualo. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much.